Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Brock Bagby, Executive Vice President and Chief Content and Development Officer at B&B Theaters. But let's talk about B&B Theaters, the history of the company, how long your family has been in the business of bringing that big screen experience to your patrons. We are the largest privately held theater chain in America, 56 locations, 513 screens. We didn't start out that way. So we're 98 years old. My great grandpa started the company in 1924 in a little town called Salisbury, Missouri. He got off the train, saw the theater was for sale, thought it was a good idea and bought it. And that's how we got into the theater business. You know, he was a functioning theater and w one of the employees played the piano for the silent movies. Okay. Eventually she became my great grandmother. He married her <laughs> and the two of them started, my, my maternal mom's last name was Bills. So it was Elmer Bills Sr. And, and the Bills, they started Bills Theaters Incorporated. And when my dad's dad, so other side of the family was 10 years old, he went to work for them as a popcorn boy. And uh, he went off to World War II, came back, loved the business so much, started his own chain of theaters in Kansas. Eventually back to my mom's side, Elmer Bill Sr. and his wife, and my great grandma had a son, Elmer Bills Jr. who got into the business, went to college, came back and continued to grow Bill's theaters. So my dad's dad, Sterling, and his wife, Pauline, my mom's parents, Elmer and Amy, had kids, of course, which were my parents. And the two families were always good friends. They went to conventions together. They went on summer vacations together. They were just close family friends. My parents literally grew up together. And eventually in college, they realized that they would never find anyone that had more in common. And they fell in love and got married. 1980, the two became one. So Bagby and Bills became B&B Theaters. So now my sisters and I are the fourth generation. In 1980, when the two companies combined, there were 17 screens. And today there's 513. We've made some headway since 1980. All three of us running different departments, but combined we're running all the departments. And then my dad and is president, mm -hmm. CEO and chairman. And my, my mom is owner with my dad. And uh, now we've got seven grandkids under eight. And so we've got wow, seven okay. fifth generations already in the works. <laughs> and they're the official screenplay testers. They test our new playground equipment in our theater. So that's the, you know, 98 years in about two minutes. With this literally or figuratively, however you want to say, say it, baked into the familial DNA, is there anything else you would ever want to do or would that have just not even happened? We were never told you have to do this. We were always encouraged to live your own life, go explore, do whatever you want. But I, I, I mean, at a very young age, I started working at the theater at 14 and just fell in love with it. I was on Ren track at 16, you know, looking at the numbers <laughs> and 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 yep. obsessing over box office and numbers and theater rankings. And it's rare that you see that kind of continuity between the generations. But I want to talk about how your family obviously is left brain, right brain. In other words, you know the business side, but you're also a film fanatic. Our history is small town America. You know, we still have 20 of our 56 theaters are still small town America, you mm -hmm. know, and we're the only thing in town. There's no bowling alley. There, there's two options. There's football Fridays or there's going to the movies. Right. And so we have to entrench ourselves in those communities and we, in every community, not just our small markets, we're, we're part of the chamber. We're part of the Kiwanis club. You know, we're, 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 in, we're in all those clubs. We go to the events, we, we set up booths at the fall festival and we're there on football Friday, you know, selling popcorn. I mean, we're very entrenched in the community. And I think that's one thing that has set us apart as we've grown into the bigger suburbs or exurbs, we still really try to carry that. And so we tell our managers, yes, count your hours when you go to the community gathering, count your hours at the festival. We want you to be a part of the community. And even in some mar larger markets, we are still one of the best out of home forms of entertainment. And, and it's still cheaper to go to our theater than go to the Chiefs game here in Kansas City. <laughs> so we, we really believe in that. And we really pride ourselves on that, kind of that history of the small town, family atmosphere, but then try to invigorate that into the bigger communities. And and now, you know, especially in the last 10 years, we have really tried to, you know, it's it, we were always good at customer service, but now it's about comfort and amenities and concepts and how can we differentiate ourselves. But also we're one of the only circuits that have fully converted our small towns to recliners. I mean, all, a lot of the, you know, the bigger groups out there just walked away or have never been able to do it. But, you know, we were one of the first to pioneer some small town recliners and it worked there. Uh, our first three was Junction City, Kansas, which is a big military town. 
Harrisonville, Missouri, tiny little suburb south of Kansas City, and then Wildwood, Missouri, which is a huge suburb in St. Louis, and all three worked. And we were like, we this is this is going to work everywhere. So it's all about the comfort and the experience as well. So what you're saying is you really look at the community that you're in. You're not looking at this from a 30,000 foot view. You're really at the granular level deciding, hey, we need to put recliners in these theaters where a bigger chain might not be that locally focused. How, how do you, and I think you kind of addressed this already, differentiate the experience in your theaters versus the bigger, let's say, national or global chains? Yeah, I mean, we have five core values, family, fun, joy, integrity, and innovation. Those we really try to live by. You know, we say, welcome to the B&B family. From the frontline employee to the family itself, we, we try to incorporate this whole family atmosphere. Um, so one of our biggest data issues is personnel. You know, we want everybody to feel happy and we're always working to make everyone feel a part of the team and feel important and valued because we need everyone to make this work. How closely do you work with your individual theater managers to come up with new innovative promotions or ways to get the audience excited about upcoming movies, not just the upcoming movies, but going to your theaters specifically. Yeah, we work really hard with our managers. We have a, a monthly call with all the entire company, all the managers, assistant managers, um, all the way up. And one thing we do, like when we came up with our premium large format, our grand screen, we actually did all the managers and up got to take a vote on 10 different options. And then what ended up being the b, &B grand screen was what was voted on. So that wasn't a choice that just the family came up with. It was a unified decision. Our slogan, bringing Hollywood to your hometown, actually Mary Pat McIntyre, who's been with us for 30 years back in 1985 or 86, came up with it and we've been using it ever since. Really cool. It seems like you understand, obviously, the importance of not spreading the manager too thin because then they can't give that individual attention to each theater or the patrons. And that really is significant for that to happen, especially again, you're a family devoted to the movie theater. And I know there were a lot of naysayers at the time who said, pandemic accelerated the inevitable demise of the movie theater. It's over, uh, people are gonna stay at home. Disney Plus had just come online November of 2019. What did you honestly think at the time of those naysayers? I think I know the answer already because I know what I thought, but I mean, what did you think at the time? Did those naysayers have a point? Did you think for a moment, maybe they're right? What did you think of that at the time when people were counting out the movie theater? You know, luckily we have some longevity and you know, I, I remember my dad calming us down and saying, you know, I remember when a VA VHS came out and it was over, you know, we had two or three yep. years of, of awful and then Home Alone came out and it saved everything. You know, when DVDs came out and Netflix and, and we've survived so many things and at the end of the day, we all kept telling each other, you got to get out of the house. It doesn't matter if you have a 90 inch TV and the best recliner sofa and you got to get out of the house. Right. The history show that you make money when you go to theatrical first. And luckily, I know you're gonna get into this, that's been yeah. proven by this pandemic. And, and in fact, you know, we've spent the last 20 years fighting about the window. And now I think there's a solution. And hopefully coming out of COVID, that conversation is kind of over. We've tested it and proved it, not in the way we wanted to, but it worked kind of in our favor. I think as an exhibitor, there's data now to prove, look, you don't make as much money if you don't go theatrical first. I will say that when, when everything shut down, dad set the family down and he said, I'm going to deal with all of our banks. Our CFO, you deal with all the landlords. Brock, I want you to focus on the studios and I also want you to look for opportunities. There are going to be more opportunities than ever before. And this is the time to grow. We will make better deals now than we've ever made. Brittany, you deal with all the vendors. And Bobby, you figure out how we're going to get people in these buildings because she's our head of marketing. And what happened was, you know, a lot of times these landlords would, would call and I would be the first person to answer because everyone was furloughed. I mean, there was right. nobody. You had to be there the on the front line. And so, I, you know, I was still at the office and so, or at my home office. Some of the deals we got were literally because we were the first people that picked up. It was incredible. I mean, we grew quicker than we've ever grown. We've acquired 12 theaters, 140 screens. But a lot of that was, instead of sitting back and going, let's wait it out, we jumped in because we believed it was going to come back. And, yeah. you know, knock on wood, thank whatever you believe. Thank the Lord. And, right. But I want to segue into what is it like working in a family business that I think so many people would love to be a part of. And feel free to give a shout out by name to your family, your dad, obviously Bob Bagby, a legend. Yeah, you know, we are so tight knit. And again, I think the legacy has kept us together and not fighting because we were honoring the history and our grandparents that we were so close to. And people are, will say to me, well, how are you three, meaning my sister, Bobby, Bagby Ford, 
my other sister, Brittany Bagby Baker, who are all equally executive vice presidents and then different areas we oversee, going to do it, the three of you together, because you know, it's just Bob. And, and I'm quick to remind them that in the 80s and 90s, it was my dad, his dad, and my mom's dad. So there was three of them that ran the company. Yeah. And they all had different talents and we all have different talents. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, Brock Bagby, yeah. Executive Vice President, Chief Content and Development Officer at b, &B Theaters. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I think everyone should seek out b, &B theaters. Even if they're not in a state that you live, you can fly or drive there. Thank, Thank you. you, Brock, for being here. I look forward to seeing you soon. I'll see you at the movies. Yes, amen. <laughs>